In this video, I will introduce the ratio test, a theorem that we can use to try to determine whether a series is convergent or divergent by performing a simple limit computation. I will explain the theorem and why it works in this video, and then in the next video, I will illustrate it with some examples. Here's what the theorem says. I begin with a series, sum of a n. I want to determine whether it is convergent or divergent. I'm going to assume that none of the terms I am adding is zero. They could be positive, negative, anything, just not zero. And I'm going to compute the following limit. The limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n. What this means is one term of the series divided by the previous one. I'm going to assume that this limit exists or is infinity. In both cases, I can possibly obtain some information. There is a more general version of this theorem that doesn't require the limit even to exist by using the concept of limit superior, but I won't explain that in this video. For now, I'll just assume it exists or is infinity. And then I'm going to split this in three cases. Depending on whether this limit is less than one, equal to one, or greater than one, I will get different conclusions. First, what can I conclude if the limit is smaller than one? Let's look at what the limit means. I'm calculating the quotient of one term divided by the previous one in absolute value. If this limit is smaller than one, it tells me that in absolute value, the terms of the series are getting smaller and they're getting smaller quick. So I expect they will be converging to zero and actually converging to zero quickly. And in that case, the theorem concludes that the series is absolutely convergent. In the other end, when the limit is greater than one, remember this is the quotient of one term by the previous one in absolute value. If this limit is greater than one, it means that in absolute value, the terms are not getting smaller, they're getting bigger. So they can't possibly be converging to zero. And if the terms I am adding do not converge to zero, then the series must be divergent. And there is a middle case. When the limit is one, then I can draw no conclusion. Every theorem about convergence of series has a case like this. In some cases, they're able to tell us whether the series is convergent or divergent, but there's always a situation in which they don't give us any information. In this case, when the limit is one, the series could be absolutely convergent or conditionally convergent or divergent, but we don't know yet. We have to try something else to figure out which one it is. I'm not going to write a full proof rigorously in all detail, but I want to summarize the idea of the proof because it explains why the theorem works on a more or less intuitive level. So remember, I'm calling L this limit, and this is the limit of the quotient of one term divided by the previous one in absolute values. The easier case is when this limit is greater than one. As I said before, if this limit is greater than one, it means that for large values of n, the terms are getting bigger in absolute value, not smaller. And if the terms are getting bigger, then the limit of the terms of the series cannot possibly be zero. And we know if the terms are not approaching zero, the series is divergent by the necessary condition. That's the easy case. The more interesting case to prove is when the limit is smaller than one. It'll necessarily have to be greater than or equal to zero because it's a limit of positive terms. In this case, I'm going to interpret that the limit is L by saying that for large values of n, the absolute value of a n plus one over a n is approximately L. If I am rigorous from the definition of limit, I will say that it is between a little bit more than L and a little bit less than L, and that will be enough. I'm going to rewrite this by saying that the absolute value of a n plus 1 is about the absolute value of a n times L. Now, this will only be true for large values of n, but that is good enough, because we know for the purpose of convergence or divergence, the only thing that matters is what happens to the tail of the series. And I recognize another series that behaves exactly like this, that one term is the previous one times a constant. That is how geometric series work. So this is going to allow me to do a comparison between this series with absolute values and the sum of L to the N. But we know the sum of L to the N is convergent because it's a geometric series with L being between zero and one. And that will allow me to prove that the original series is absolutely convergent. That is all that there is to the proof. The rest are formal details. I invite you as an exercise to try to complete the rigorous proof that filling in all those formal details, all the epsilons and such. But all the ideas you need are summarized here. Well, that is the theory. How do we use this theorem in practice? I'm going to illustrate it with two examples. Here are two series, and I want to determine whether they are convergent or not. 
and it's going to be a straightforward. Just take the theorem and compute the limit it says we should compute, and based on the outcome, see which conclusion we can draw. I invite you to try to perform the calculations and see which conclusions you can draw before watching it.